I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Hey, 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 hey. I feel my help now. I feel my help now. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Eight years, eight years, eight years. And eight years, we, we not a toddler no more. We, we not an infant no more. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we're growing up in God's grace. We're growing up. And we should start moving into spiritual maturity. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, thank you, brothers. Thank you for the Holy, Holy Ghost. All right, all right. That you yielded your member, yielding yourself as a vessel, so that the Holy Ghost can flow through. Yeah. Because it's just something about when the saints get together. All right. Y'all you know I mean, y'all I mean, ain't listening. It's just something about when the saints get together. And, and, and get on one accord. Strange. An unusual thing. Start happening. When the saints begin to praise God.
Jesus. Now when you go home, don't don't go and swing on the on the chandelier tonight. But you're gonna feel like you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all ain't crazy, man. That's a sad place. Beginning at verse number three, chapter one, Philippians chapter one, beginning at verse three. joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day up to now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about you, about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that ye may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless unto the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, 
most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preached Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or truth, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Amen. I want to stop right there. And I would that you would, as I always tell you, go back and read this uh, this chapter and the next chapter, at least chapter 2 and 3 in its entirety so you can really fully understand uh, everything that's going on here. But I want to talk for a few moments from the subject. Even this is a God thing. Even this is a God thing. Lord, please help me now as I preach your word. The grass withereth, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Even this is a God thing. You may be seated. The Apostle Paul writes this letter to the church at Philippi. And it is a letter of admiration it, and it also is a letter of admonishment to a people that although Paul finds himself locked away in a jail. Mm -hmm. Although he literally, as he's talking about bound with chains, he literally was bound with chains, but however, even in his chains, God showed him favor. All right. And Paul is in correspondence with the, with the church there in Philippi and he's glad to know that even though uh, he being their founder and their leader is a way for the sake of ministry and for the sake of the gospel he, he's been locked away for the sake of the gospel he's glad to know that the people and the way that he established the church and how uh, he established them on the word of the church. They're still carrying out the work of ministry the way God gave it to first him. And because they believe uh, in him and they believe in the him that Paul came and established the church in, they are carrying out the work of ministry like it's supposed to. Now, what does that say to us? We could, we could take a, a lesson from the church at Philippi or from the Philippian people because oftentimes we will do half, we will try to do half right when the pastor is in front of us. I said half right because you can't get, you don't do completely, you don't do a whole right. It's just, it's just a half right. You only do as much as you can while they're in your presence to make it seem like that you are, you know, moderately obedient. But when the pastor is away, then you will find out who is the one that will obey and keep things moving in the way that it's supposed to be. Let me put it to you this way. 
everybody that has a job, when you go to work, you are ex you expect you have your job, you have your job description, and then you have your job assignment. See, so your job description, it may not be different than the job assignment itself, but there are things in the job description that you may not do every day. But because you are, you have a supervisor that's over you, he or she may assign you to do some things that may not necessarily be in your job description. description. Come on. Come on. I, I know I'm going somewhere. Uh, but because you are, and here's the word, you are a subordinate, uh -huh. you are expected to do whatever is asked of you even if it's not in your job description. description. Come on, come on. Uh, am, I, am I helping somebody in here? See, see, some of you think that you can throw your way around because you know your job description. That ain't in my job description. I don't have to do that. You own dumb folks clock. Come on, come on. Y'all ain't helping me here. Come on. Uh, you, 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 you are paid to do what they want you to do. Y'all ain't helping me here now. And what difference is it going to make if, if you sitting at a computer or if they ask you to sweep the floor? Well, they're giving you something that don't require no brain power for the moment other than to go back and forth. You're going to get paid the same amount of money. What you complaining about? I worked in on jobs, and that's what people, they, they, he asked me to sweep the floors and take out the train. Well, what's the problem? You're still getting paid the same. Well, that ain't a part of my job description. That's for the, that's for the shop hands to do. Well, if the shop hands, they done lay them off, and so somebody got to take the trash off. Come on. And if you want to keep working, you're going to do what I asking you to do. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, with that being said, your supervisor or the, the lead person or the manager or the general manager may be absent from the job, but they are still expecting the work to get done. Because I shouldn't have to tell you every day to do something that you do every day. Y'all ain't right. helping me now. That's right. And, and, and some of us, we have the same job description, and we have the and and we have the same job assignment, and we come in to work, and we expecting somebody to tell us what to do every day. You don't need God. Don't need people that need to be told what to do every day, especially when you already know what you're supposed to do. Come on, come on, come on. Amen, like it's wrong. But the truth of the matter is. When, you're absent, when, the, when the leader is absent, that's when you find out exactly what you have, what you've been leading. Come on. I'm going to say that again. When the leader is absent, that's when you'll find out exactly what you have been leading. Are you leading some people who 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 are following uh, the leadership? Uh, I remember some years ago I was at the Potter's house and uh, T.D. Jakes was standing out in the in the foyer, he's talking with some people. And I was just in ear shy of where he was, and that was a young lady, I think I heard him tell the story before, that was a young lady that was talking with him. And she said, she said, Bishop, what are they doing in that room down there to the left? And he, this reply was, I don't know. And she said, well, you don't know? what they're doing you're the pastor you're the bishop and you don't know what they're doing and then he said no i don't know per se exactly what they're doing he said but i can imagine that whatever they're doing is come going on. along with the guidelines of what they have been taught and trained come to on, do come on come on come on come on and i don't have to stand over them to see what they doing because I have faith and trust in the people that's in position and leadership to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. That blessed me. I was in the issue of that and I didn't even get it. But it blessed me. Uh -huh. Because too often in ministry 
As long as the pastor's there, everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. Don't let the pastor get sick. Don't let the pastor go on an extended vacation. Oh, he better not go and be down there uh, 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 helping protest and get arrested and y'all can't get him out. Y'all gonna go to talking about him and ready to vote him out and put one of y'all no good selves behind the poor pit before he can get out of jail. Mm, mm, mm. Paul said, I pray for y'all because I'm hearing of the good work that y'all are doing even in my absence. He says, I'm glad to know, I'm glad to hear that you all are keeping the torch burning. I'm glad to know that not one person has decided to deviate from the plan of God. And at that time, that's why Paul got into talking about the different uh, people, the false ministries and false prophets at that time, there was a lot of false teaching going on. And by them being a young church, they could have easily have fallen into or being a victim of a false prophet coming in and destroying everything that Paul had started in them. And that's why Paul, when he got to verse number six, he said, I want to encourage you to be confident in this very thing, that he that has begun a good work in you shall perform it or shall complete it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, what God started in you, just know it ain't me who started it. It was God who started the work in you. And he's going to keep working on you until he perfects you. Come on, that's good. That's good. Amen. That's good. See, some of us don't understand that while, while you're going through and you don't understand the reasoning why you're going through. Uh -oh. yeah. It is for this very verse right here. Being confident of this very day. Uh -huh. Come on, teach. That he that has begun a good work in you mm -hmm. will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus. You're going through, and the reason why you're going through is because God is perfecting something within you. Come on, come on, come on. And he's not going to, he's not like man. He's not, see, some, see, some of us, we, we, we can start to help somebody, and they can mess up, and they can make us mad, and we don't want to help them no more. Thank God that God is not like man. Because, see, I, the way we help people it is based solely on condition. Amen. Amen. It's some folk uh, uh, that, that do work only because, not only for the money, but they want, they want to be able to get a reference from you. So you'll tell people how good they be. Yeah. So that that will help generate more customers or more clients. And all of that's fine, and all of that's good, but that not that shouldn't be the only reason why you're doing what you do. For the body of Christ, we don't do what we do for folk to recognize what we're doing. We do it so God can get the glory out of our lives. That's why we gotta be careful of what we do, how we do, how we ex uh, go through life experiences, and then certainly when it comes to ministry, we got to make sure that not only we do ministry, but we remain ministry minded. minded. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's good. That's good. See, some of us, our mind on ministry until it's time for us to minister. Come on. Oh. I'm going to say that again. If some of us ain't, ain't, ain't thinking about ministry until it's our time to minister. Jesus. Uh, in, in, in other words, uh, uh, now, now you're ready, you ready to study. Now you're ready to try to burn the midnight oil. Now you're trying to do 
your part to look like a preacher, look like a minister, sound like a minister, but up until you get your opportunity to minister, you're still acting like the world. You're still doing everything that everybody else is doing, and that's why it's a hard struggle for you when it's your time to minister, because a lot of stuff got to fall off and shake off before you can stand up and minister. Man, and when I when I first started in the ministry, and the first few opportunities that I got, it seemed like it was a it was hell week. Every time I got ready, Daddy says you gonna preach this, and it was hell week because it seemed like everything was breaking loose, trying to get me to prevent me from not bringing that message. But the truth of the matter is, it was because I was doing a lot of things. Still, I was still holding on to a lot of the old me. Minister, when it was time to minister, but when you make up your mind that you done made up your mind, Come that on. you done made up your mind, Come that on. you want to do it like God would have done, Come and on. in spite of the enemy, would leave you alone. Hey. Amen. Oh, what Paul says, he says that in my prayers, I pray for all of you with the joy because of your partnership. It's good to pray for people and have joy about praying for them. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we pray and we have so much, we have so many different emotions going in our hearts for the people that we pray for. Amen. Amen. We, don't, we, don't really, we don't really know if we sincere when we say God bless them. Amen. Amen. Watch over them. We don't know if we're really sincere sometimes. My God, my God, my God. Amen. We say the words, but we really don't know if we're sincere. Because everybody you pray for, you ain't got joy in praying for them. Jesus. Paul says, I, I, got, I, got, I have joy uh, with you because of the partnership in the gospel from the first day of the now. Since you started, you kept doing, you, you stayed your course. And it gives him joy to know that the people of God are still on the path. Yeah. Everybody that say that they're on the path is not on the path. Amen. Amen. He says in verse 7, says, it is, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. But I've been changed or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. And God can testify how long for all of you with the, how I long for you with all the affections of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight. He said, I want you to go deeper in God. Amen. That's what he just said. Don't don't just stay on don't just stay in the shadows of the word. Don't just stay on the periphery. Don't just stay on the shore. He said, I want you to be get deeper in the knowledge of Christ. I want you to be able to have more insight on what God is saying through the word. Amen. Amen. Because, see, there are some folk, uh, you think that the scripture, and I, and I always say this, especially to the ministers, that when, when you read the scripture, you can't read the scripture and determine and try to base your, put your subject together and put your message together based on what you read and lean into your own understanding. Because, see, everything that the word, the word is, is spiritual. It's non-carnal. And although he used sometimes carnal analogies and carnal things uh, 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 in the world that we, that we can relate to, there's a spiritual thing that God is saying through the word. And you have to ask God to open your mind and your spirit, man, so that you can get exactly what he wants from, from the word so that you can be able to convey that word, that message to the people of God. Amen. Amen. I, I heard some people preach messages and give it a topic and it ain't got nothing to do with the word. Come on, come on. Amen. And preach and think they done done something. If you got to ask somebody how you did, chances are you know you ain't did nothing. Amen. Oh, bless God. 
Yeah, you know, I ain't got to say nothing anyhow. I'm going to preach on. Paul says, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless into the day of Christ. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that, that comes from Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. Now he says, now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. And that word advance means, or uh, it says for the fathers of the gospel, fathers mean to help to move forward. Advance uh, is, a, is a movement forward. So how then can we look at Paul being locked up in jail and he's saying that this actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. I, maybe, you know, maybe we look at it, we would think, well, the leader is locked away. How then now is the church going to grow? The leader is locked away. How then now we going to get a word? Well, Paul says this actually turned out for the good, for my good, because this is a God thing. God had it made, fixed it so that I would be in jail. But because of the God, not only in Paul, but the God in the people, they kept the faith, they stayed the course, and God is feeding the people. And yet, look now, that was not one person who tried to put himself above anybody else in the ministry to, to determine well I'm the leader now since Paul is gone. You know how folk are because folk soon as the preacher gets sick he may not be out two weeks. Somebody is going to try to establish their dominance. Somebody going to try to establish that I'm the next man in charge and as, as a matter of fact they're going to go and lie and come back and say when I talked to Bishop last weekend, he told me that if anything happened to him, that I was the one that's going to take over the church. And he ain't even seen Bishop, but I'm here to tell you, you got to be careful with folk. And that's why I'm trying to help you understand that Paul says, he said, this actually turned out for the furtherance, for the advancement of the gospel. And, and, and even though he was locked up, even though he could not get out, he says that I'm in chains he says, but look, this is what I need you to look at. Look at this fact. He says, as a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone that I am in chains for Christ. And what that means is Paul simply says, now it's starting to show that I'm not here because I committed a crime. I'm here because God got me here. And if God has me here, he has me here for a purpose. Somebody say a purpose. That's what you got to know that you're not here this morning on accident. You're here on purpose. And you're here for a purpose. And since God got, has you here for a purpose, and if you don't know your purpose, it is high time, as the old folks say, that you ask God, what? is my purpose for being here. Because God don't just set you somewhere and just leave you there all willy-nilly. God have a perfect plan for you. And if you don't know what the plan is for your life, I heard the scripture say, for I know the plans that he have for you. God got for you in the work of ministry. Paul said it best. He says, now everybody knows. Come on, come on. Hey, everybody knows that, that, I, that I'm not just here because I, 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 I'm a common criminal, I'm a thief, or I, I'm a robber, or I'm a cheater. No, no I, I none of those things. They know now that God has his hands on me. And I'm here because God is doing the work. <laughs> Y'all ain't helping me here now. Huh? See, God, and most folk think uh, that you can't, that the ministry is not going to thrive unless you there. Oh, my God. It's some folk that, that, that think that the church can't be the church unless you there. It's some folk think that the 
church ain't going to grow uh, because you ain't there to help it grow. It's some folks who think that the church going to grow down because you haven't showed up with your tithes and with your offering. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, the church was here before you. Uh, and the church going to be here after you. Y'all ain't helping me here now. Uh, Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against us. I don't care what devil in hell and what evil form speaks against us. The Bible says they shall be condemned. Have, have, have our witness here. For Paul says that it is evident by the whole palace guard that everyone else and everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my Lord, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God. And he says, more courageously and fearlessly. See, in those days, people were, they were kind of timid to preach the gospel. They were timid because we're preaching a word and we're telling people what to do and what not to do. And some of us right now are afraid to tell people the whole truth. But I'm here to tell you, you got to tell them the whole truth. And that's why I learned to stand all by myself because when people, if you're trying to be friends with the world, the Bible says that you're enemy to God. Have I witness here? And I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to be your buddy. I'm here to tell you what thus saith the Lord. And Paul says that I have through what I've gone through, it has encouraged others to, 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 to proclaim the word more courageously and fearlessly. It is the truth that some preach out of envy. Thank God we're not preachers of envy or preachers out of envy. Some are preaching idle rivalry. You know, we got preachers that comp compete to see who can dump it. Who can, who can, who can holler the loudest. Uh, who can shout the people. But the, the, the Apostle Paul says, yes, they're preaching out of rivalry. They're angry and they think that they are the baddest thing or the best thing since sliced bread. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers, and my sisters, he said, but then there are those who preach out of goodwill. The latter do see, do so in love. Knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. I don't know how you feel about it, but I also am a defender of the gospel. Yes. The Paul says the farmer preached Christ out of selfish ambition. They're not sin fear. But I'm here to tell you if you're going to preach, you need to preach out of love. You need to preach out of compassion. And you need to preach uh, to save that which is lost. Oh Lord, we need less God to not preach to entertain, but we need to preach to save those men and women, boys and girls uh, that are seeking deep in sin uh, have our witness here. Paul said supposing uh, they could stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. Yes, God. But he asked the question, uh, but what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether in false motives or in truth, Christ 
Christ did preach. Have I witnessed in here? That's what I want to tell you now. It don't make no difference. It don't make no what how they preaching. It don't make no difference if the motives are wrong. It don't make no difference. Yes, if they just trying to uh, uh, razzle and dazzle the people. Paul says, uh, just as long as the gospel is preached. Yes, let the Holy Ghost. I feel my help now. Thank you, Jesus. And if Christ is preached, Paul says, and because of this, I rejoice in the Lord. Well, come here, all the sick false prophets. Come here, all of those who preach out of image strikes. Out a long time. 
I'ma go in some churches. Yes! 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 Yes!
thank God bless you real good on my way to heaven I want to tell somebody Jesus he lives in my soul Jesus he loves us so he went all the way to Calvary's cross y'all know what he died. Yes, he did. But the story don't end there. They took him down from the road of the cross. Put him in Joseph's new tomb. Yes, the Bible said Jesus went to visit hell. He took the keys of death and hell. From Satan. Because 
if God is in anything. If this is a God thing, you ought to know that there's going to be a, a God ending. If, 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 if God is in it, there's going to be a God ending. All we have to do is trust him. Don't doubt. And just believe. God is still a healer, even in this hour. How I know? I've never really been a sick individual, thank God. For good genes. But I have been sick in my mind. And he healed my mind. I ain't talking about MHMR or sick. I'm talking about I had some sick thoughts. Some sick views about life.
Bishop Ricky Ross Sr. Pastor Sunday Service 8 a.m. and 11 a.m.